Everyone, welcome back to another tech series video here at Vapor Hunter Technologies. Today we're going to be talking about abrasive delivery systems in sandblast and wet blast. Let's get into it. So to start this video, I do want to mention that any of the processes that I mentioned after this point do require an air compressor. Now they will vary in the amount of CFM or PSI that is required, but you do have to supply compressed air to both a sandblasting machine and a wet blasting machine. Now what's right behind me is the machine that we're going to be starting with. This is the VH1000 sandblast here from Vapor Honey Technologies. This machine is currently set up as a siphon machine, meaning it pulls abrasive through to the blast gun. The way you can tell with a dry blast machine, whether it is a pressure pot setup, a direct pressure setup, or a siphon setup is by actually looking at the blast gun. So we'll start there. So again, with the siphon machine, which is what we're looking at, you have two hoses that are supplied to the blasting gun. One is your suction. So this is where you're actually siphoning abrasive from your reclaimer in this case. And the other one is your air inlet. So this is where your compressed air is entering the blasting gun and it's actually causing that suction to come from the reclaimer or the hopper and be propelled out of the blasting gun. Now we're standing beside the VH2000 dry blast. This is a direct pressure setup, meaning it has a pressure pot. And you'll notice it only has one blast hose and it leads to one blasting gun. That's because the compressed air and the abrasive are combined together in this system and they're all propell propelled out of the same hose. Now I'm standing beside the VH1000 sandblast machine that's set up as a siphon system again. And I wanted to show you guys, this is the metering valve that sits below the reclaimer. Now again, a reclaimer is not necessary for a siphon system but all this does is as you're blasting it pulls abrasive into this separation chamber dust gets pulled out your abrasive falls down into this hopper if you guys want to learn more about reclaimers we have a video and we'll link that somewhere over here but again below this is your metering valve so as you're blasting in your blast gun like i was saying earlier you're adding positive pressure from your air compressor here that's forcing the air out of the end of the blasting gun and it causes a suction to be formed on this other inlet that other inlet is pulling from here now when i say metering valve, what that means is you can actually adjust how much abrasive you're allowing to flow. That's solely based on how much a gate is actually opening and allowing more abrasive to flow through it. This machine is currently set up for glass bead. When you guys get your machine, we will have the machine set up properly for the abrasive that you guys are looking to blast with. But that is essentially how a siphon machine works. It's very simple. Again, compressed air is applied to the top of the blasting gun. That causes suction to be formed on the secondary inlet and it pulls the abrasive into the blasting gun and then propels it out the end. A few of the benefits of a siphon machine is that it's a continuous system. Unlike pressure pots, like we'll get into here in a minute, siphon can continuously blast as it's recirculating that exact same abrasive. This means that you do not have downtime during your operation. But because you are not actually forcing the abrasive into the blasting gun, it does have a lower impact velocity than a direct pressure machine. Now guys, we are standing beside the VH1000 shot blast. The reason I wanted to show this is because it has the pressure pot mounted directly below the cabinet. So it's under the hopper as you're blasting, the abrasive just falls down directly into the pressure pot down here. Now you can have a pressure pot with a reclaimer. It sits below the reclaimer hopper and it works the exact same way as the siphon. I do show that in our reclaimer video, which again, you guys can watch from the iCard that was previous or from the description below. With a pressure pot, the way this actually operates is you have a plunger that sits in a seat at the top of this pot right here. What that means is when there's no, no pressure applied to the blasting pot, that plunger drops down. When it drops down, it removes the seal and abrasive is allowed to flow back into the pressure pot. Now, if you move over here real quick, you guys can see we have a pressurized and depressurized sticker that's on the side of the cabinet with a three-way ball valve. So what this does is it actually allows you to pressurize that pot. It forces compressed air in and forces that plunger up. Now you have a sealed system. You have positive pressure inside of the blasting pot and you are mixing the compressed air and the blasting abrasive inside of the chamber. So now you have a ton of positive pressure inside of that blasting pot. And when you step on the foot pedal, a valve opens and that's what actually allows both the abrasive and compressed air to travel through that one singular hose to the blasting gun. Now you have a lot of energy that's flowing through that hose and that's why direct pressure machines are capable of flowing larger abrasives and also impacting the, the part much harder. So again, you have to account time to allow the pressure pot to open and refill. And typically this is when you are handling or reloading parts. All right guys, now we're going to switch gears from sandblast over to wet blast. 
and beside me is the micro hone this is our entry level vapor honing machine here at vapor honing technologies it does function slightly different from the rest of our lineup this one does not have the submersible pump that we typically use it has a diaphragm pump that actually supplies the slurry to the blasting gun it does use the same style blasting hose so you still have compressed air supplied here on the top and then your slurry is coming from the bottom now the way this functions a little bit differently is it does not pull media from the bottom of the hopper this is to help prevent the diaphragm pump from getting stopped up so it actually starts agitating moves that abrasive around creates the slurry and then starts pulling it in so you do have to wait just a few seconds for that to happen whenever you start blasting with the micro vapor hone but this is a very capable system again it does have a proper agitation that's suited for this size pump so you don't have to worry about that and the diaphragm pumps we see these things lasting forever as long as you are using the correct size abrasive with a micro vapor hone it is not capable of using all the wide range of abrasives as something like the weekend warrior would but that's because it doesn't have as large of hoses blast gun and the diaphragm pump itself is not capable of blasting with those abrasives this machine is currently set up with soda the micro vapor hone is a great choice for soda because it can easily move that around and agitate it it's also a great choice for glass speed and that's typically what we see this machine being used with. Now with the micro vapor hone and its slurry delivery process there are really a minute number of things that can go wrong. The main problem that we see with micro vapor hones is that you allow the water to evaporate and your water level gets too low. Again this does not pull from the bottom of the hopper so you want to make sure that you have the correct amount of water inside this machine. You guys can actually see the picture that's in our setup guide to make sure that you are at the appropriate level. The the only other problem that we have out of micro vapor homes, and it's really not a problem, it's just an issue when it's misused, is that you allow the media to hard pack inside of the pump. Now we always recommend agitating these things at least once every two days. If you know that it's gonna be sitting for a long period of time, make sure that you drain the machine before allowing it to sit. All right, up next, we're gonna be talking about our standard submersible pump abrasive delivery system. We are standing beside the VH800FL. This is our entry level industrial machine. It does use, again, the same style wet blast gun. So you've got your air delivery on top, your slurry delivery on the bottom. Now, what this machine does differently than the micro vapor hone is again, it has a submersible pump in the bottom of the hopper. Now, a submersible pump uses an impeller like this that when it spins, it agitates the abrasive that's down there and also supplies it to the blasting gun. Now, with this machine specifically, all of the machines that have the submersible pump with the exception of the VH700 have two agitation tubes. What those are are outlets for the abrasive line that runs up to the blasting gun that run back down into the hopper to try and move the abrasive that's sedimented to the bottom around. That way you get a better mixture of your water to abrasive back to your blasting gun. The benefit of a submersible pump is that it completely opens up your range of abrasives. This thing can use large aggressive media. It can use very small fine media. It doesn't have any issue with that. They're also very reliable and they put out a much higher flow rate to the actual blasting gun. Now this gun is sized appropriately as well as the nozzle tip. You can change them out depending on the abrasive size that you are using and you can also change the air jet that's inside these blast guns to lower them down to mesh better with your compressor if you use a different size air jet you will vary the results but as far as the actual abrasive delivery from these pumps it's very good. Now, I wanna go over some simple troubleshooting when it comes to the abrasive de delivery system with these machines. In shipping, a lot of times what happens is the pump gets knocked around and it needs to be set back up properly. So as soon as you receive your machine, you can actually just take the floor out, look down on the hopper. If your pump is on its side, go ahead and sit it back up properly. Another thing you need to look for is the agitation tubes. There's gonna be two tubes that come off the top of your pump that need to be pointed down towards the back of the machine. Again, this is to improve the agitation of the abrasive that's sitting in the bottom of the hopper. That being said, same thing that happens with the micro. If you are going to leave this machine sitting for longer than two days, we recommend draining the water. Another big thing you can do whenever you come back to use the machine, if you do not drain it, is actually, again, lift the floor up, pull the pump up and sit it back down on top of the abrasive. If you allow the abrasive to sit in there for a while, it will actually sediment down to the bottom of the machine. And when you try and use it, you will try and force a brick of abrasive through your blasting hose and that just does not work. So again, if you are coming back and the machine hasn't been used in a while, we recommend pulling the pump up and setting it back down on top of the abrasive 
and starting from there. Now, the last machine that we need to talk about the abrasive delivery system in is our HD. Our HD is the industrial machine here from Vapor Hunting Technologies, and we actually do not have one in our showroom, but it functions very similar to this 800 FL that I'm standing beside of. And again, with the exception of the micro vapor hone, all of our machines function very similarly. The only difference between the HD and the FL that I'm standing beside of is that the motor that actually turns the impeller is only outside of the cabinet. Now this is mainly for reliability, not saying that this machine is not reliable, it is, but in an industrial setting where you're using this machine 24 seven, having the motor on the outside makes it easier to replace and it also is more reliable. It does use the same impeller that this machine gets the same style impeller, and it actually uses the same blasting gun. Now we do have HD blasting guns that we put inside of these machines upon request. They're slightly different than this, and those will be coming out shortly. But for now, it is the exact same setup. If you do drop a foreign object into your hopper, you need to get some sort of strainer and actually pull through the abrasive and find that part. Do not attempt to allow it to come through your abrasive delivery system. It can and will cause damage. Thank you all for watching. If you guys have any other questions that I did not answer, in this video, please leave them in the comments below. That's why we're doing this tech series is to answer the questions that you guys have. We can't show exactly how the pumps are set up because it does have some proprietary information involved. But again, if you guys have any questions about the pump system, about any other aspect of these cabinets, both wet and dry blast, or even parts washing, leave it in the comments below and we'll make sure to answer that. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.